तीर्थंकरो जगतना जयवंत वर्तो ओंकार नाद जिननो जयवंत वर्तो जिनना समो शरण सौ जयवंत वर्तो ने तीर्थ चार जग मा जयवंत वर्तो नमो ए तीर्थ नायक ने नमो ओंकार नाद ने ओंकार संगर ते ने नमो ते श्री कुंद कुंद ने अहो ओंकार जिन वरनो कुंदन हो ध्वनि दिव्यनो जिन कुंद ध्वनि आत अहो ते गुरु का ननो अहो ते भगवत मातनो ध्रुव अचल ने अनुपम गति पामेल सर्वे सीधन वंदे कहो सुत केवल भासित आसमय प्राभद हरे मुहे कसुद सदा अरुति ज्ञान दर्शन मय खरे कई अन्य ते मारो जरे परमाणु मात्र नथि हरे जम नेत्र ते मज ज्ञान नथि कारक नथि वेद करे जाने ज कर्म होदय निरज राबंद ते मज मोक्ष ने ओम नमः शिवाय ओम नमः शिवाय ओम श्री सुदात्मा ने नमः <coughs> जय जिनेंद्र <coughs> Today is February 15, 2017, and uh, we are continuing our uh, swadhya on uh, samesa. This will be the stanza um, uh, 11 that we are talking. We have gone through the first part of the stanza, and now we'll be go, heading for the second part of the stanza. <coughs> <coughs> व्यवहार नय अभूतार्थ दर्शित शुद्ध नय भूतार्थ छे भूतार्थ ने आश्रित जीव सुदृष्टि निश्चय हो व्यवहार नय अभूतार्थ दर्शित मीन्स दी कन्वेंशन पॉइंट ऑफ व्यू इज नॉट ए ट्रू वन एंड शुद्ध नहीं भूतार्थ छे your point for a pure point of view or absolute point of view is a true one so first section of the first uh, first line vyavahar nay abhutartha darshit and we went through extreme detail analyzing all the four types of conventional point of view and why they will become less important when we talk about absolute point of view and we have gone through in an exhaustive uh, uh, and details about all those things vyavahar ne shuddh nai bhutar che that's a second point shuddh nai bhutar che means the pure point of view or absolute point of view is the real one so now we are coming to that point and we try to analyze that point <coughs> vyavahar nai it was taking lots of time because so many things were involved in absolute point of view or pure point of view <clears throat> it is simply where is my aim where should i put my focus on and so those are the things that we have to talk about <clears throat> remember vyavahar number 1 pure point of view 
or absolute point of view or different names are given sometimes they are synonymous and, and so when, when we talk about partial point of view we talk about nai point of view so many names can be given i mean if we go through the nai if you go to partial point of view chapter alone for example then there are two types of nai for example it's a agam nai and adhyatma nai adhyatma nai is spiritual nai and agam nai is scriptural nai and then <coughs> it goes into the so many divisions and everything what we are talking here in this stanza is only adhyatma nai and out of that adhyatma nai means spiritual nai spiritual partial point of view we are we have talked about Conventional point of view. Now we talk absolute point of view, which is also called pure point of view. In this stanza, Acharya Bhagwan says it's a pure point of view. So we have to be aware of it that uh, why there are different nomenclature. We don't have to get confused as long as it imparts what its intended meaning is. Its intended meaning is <clears throat> the absolute point of view. What is my true state? where should i put my attention to and that is called pure point of view so we'll just go to these slides right now and see where we are and start talking about that one so now <coughs> we'll start talking about we will we'll start talking about absolute point of view so impure synthetic conventional point of view impure remember word impure means asad good means Inclination of attachment is not present in the eternal soul, and that is from the impure synthetic convention point of view. So, if the first, first first bullet was related to the inclination of attachment only. It was related to uh, uh, rag only. The second put bullet says the pure synthetic point of view. Pure, it's a pure but synthetic. What it is, Sadhguru Vyavarna means it conveys the division. There is something indivisible entity, <coughs> soul. <coughs> excuse me, soul as a substance having infinite attributes and having uh, past, present, future, infinite modes are present and composite thing. They are in unity. They are in unison. They are indivisible. For example, there is a quiet night is there, moonless night is there, and millions of uh, stars are seen in the sky. And this lake is also quiet, and on the lake I see the uh, reflection of those stars. <coughs> <coughs> I see the reflection of those stars in the quiet water. And I said, I want to find it. Where is this exact reflection occurring in this water? So I dive into the water. And when I do that, what I feel, I just feel only pure coolness of water. There are no stars seen. Nothing is there. I can't feel that. But I feel the pure nature of the water. Similarly, in soul also, um, um, uh, substance is there, infinite attributes are there, and uh, um, modes are there. But when I dive into the soul, I will just feel indivisibility, the eternal bliss, the the uh, uh, unobstructed bliss and happiness. I'll find, I'll find the peace there. <coughs> so, in a, in the <coughs> excuse me. In the indivisible thing to make artificial division for our understanding because I have not I have not experienced the indivisible soul so Acharya Bhagavan makes division and try to convey the meaning of those things to me so medium of expression is a division Acharya Bhagavan is experiencing indivisibility but he cannot express indivisibility so he has to make divisions and once divisions are there, I understand through the division the nature of the indivisibility. 
So pure synthetic point of view, it conveys the division. Both conveys meaning in the form of non-entity. Why? Because it the divisions, the divisions or impurity in the mode in the form of as, uh, inclusive of attachment. Impurity in the modes or the divisions in the uh, attributes. They both are considered as non-entity. Non-entity means are they not present at all? No, they are present, but are made secondary importance. And so both are present as a non-entity. They are present. Their presence is not denied, but because they are creating reflective thoughts, so they are made secondary, and when they are made secondary, therefore they are called non-entity, and therefore they are called conventional point of view. So here we have our conventional point of view, understanding becomes somewhat more solidified. I don't ignore that there is, there is presence of Raag within me. I don't ignore that there are the indivisibility in the soul substance and everything. So those are the things when I understand, then I have better understanding of who am I. <coughs> Eternal true nature of the all knower soul substance is the real entity. Everything, the, uh, the attributes, divisions, artificially created attributes, divisions, and the modal aspect of anything happening pure mode or impure mode, but modes, a mode exists for one semi only. So I cannot put my attention to the mode for one, which has life for one semi. So modal aspect as well as artificially created division, the attributes, they are called conventional point of view. <coughs> so what's a true point of view? What's a pure point of view? So eternal true nature of the soul substance, all knower soul substance is a real entity. Remember other tools, we made them non-entity. Even though they are present, we made non-entity and made them secondary. Here, this is the true entity for us. When one brings his attention to it, then he obtains enlightenment. Means he obtains right faith, he obtains samyak darshan, he obtains uh, 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 he, uh, he experiences the joy coming from the eternal soul substance. So important thing for us is to understand where I am, understand the reality, and after understanding the whole reality, where is the important thing that I have to keep attention on it. So now. All the knowledge that we have gathered, now we are solidifying and say, where is my final aim? So that's what we are doing. And that will be enlightenment to have uh, in um, faith directed to eternal soul substance. Rag is present in the mode. It's not denied. But it is made secondary. Divisions are present in the substance. But they are made secondary. <coughs> Modal state is made secondary even though it is present. No dinner. The Acharya Bhagavan keeps on stressing this point. And what happens? If I just say lots of time it happens, if, if one does not understand the whole gamut of the reality, then he will say only eternal true substance is a real thing and everything else is non-entity. So I ignore that one. And then he just involves himself in a lots of a <coughs> worldly activity and still thinks that his aim is only eternal soul stuff and he ignores everything else he goes on the wrong path and everything that's not the idea Acharya Bhagavan says we are not telling you to, to ignore these things and go into the wrong path three, uh, soul can do only three things Suddha Bhav means pure nature, pure, pure, pure modification, <coughs> auspicious inclination, inauspicious inclination. So three things are there. When <coughs> I am in the auspicious inclination state, rag state, 
then Acharya Bhagavan says, no, you ignore that, you make it secondary and aim to the eternal soul substance, aim to the pure nature of the soul. Acharya Bhagavan says, when we say make this secondary, it doesn't mean that you go on the wrong side. People get misconception. They say, oh, you know what? <coughs> Kanji Swami's side is very good. He doesn't ask you to do, do upwas and everything. He doesn't ask you to do pratikaman and all the things. So it's very nice. Just eat, drink, and be merry, and you will obtain some adarshan. No, Acharya Bhagavan didn't say that. He said, give this one less important. Auspicious inclination, you give less important. That means, okay, I have done fasting today. I have done fasting for two days, three days, one week, eight days, 15 days, one month. If I can do it physically and mentally, it's okay to do it. There's nothing wrong. But don't take undue, don't give undue importance to that. For example, every day in the morning, I wake up. Let's say that I was very sick and I had a bypass surgery done. And now I'm coming home. <clears throat> first night, in the first night passed by. Next morning I woke up and my wife says, How was it? Well, I did sleep. I was tossing and turning. Next night, how, uh, how was it? So I just wake up and say, I, I came to the kitchen and said, Well, I, I said kind of okay, you know. Third day, I was able to do a little better sleep. Fourth day, I did complete eight hours of sleep. Now, this four days that I talked because I was sick. Now I'm talking. Now every day I wake up, day in and day out. And I come in the kitchen and say, oh, you know what? I slept for eight hours today. I slept for eight hours today. I, she's going to say, so what a big deal. You're tired, you go to sleep, you wake up, and that's, that's not a big deal. Why do you worry about it? Why do you keep on singing that one? The thing which is routine for you, why do you keep on singing? So your subhava, auspicious inclination, is so routine. You don't, you have to just, <coughs> you have to give secondary importance to that. Because your primary aim is to go to the eternal soul substance. So, okay, you did something, it's really nice. You are not able to do it, it's okay. Uh, your aim is to come here. So that's why we have to take the importance away from here. To consider as a non-entity, even though it's present, we consider there's a non-entity. Inclusive attachment and divisions. Inclusive attachment present in the mode and divisions present in the attributes are considered as non-entity as compared to eternal soul, even though they are present. So their presence is to be acknowledged and to consider them as secondary thereafter. So all our eternal soul substance is considered true entity, means Bhutarthnai, as it is in indivisible form. Compared to the eternal self, the divisions are made secondary and thereby non-entity. I have a knowledge attribute, I have perception attribute, I have a um, 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 faith attribute, I have a happiness attribute, I have a um, um, personal effort attribute, all those attributes present, but they are made secondary, the divisions. And they are made, so that means <coughs> modes are made secondary, my divisions are made secondary, and thereby they are made, they are called conventional point of view. So, so right now, if we, if we think about how microscopically we have come from macro area to such a, to such a smallest division possible, that even to consider that I have knowledge attribute is called conventional point of view. For example, let's say I'm doing meditation right now and I'm doing meditation and I just say, I am the all knower soul substance. I'm the all knower soul substance. I'm the to speak as I am the all knower soul substance and I don't do anything. I have no other thought process at all. But that is also called reflective thoughts. 
that is called division into the attribute and if i do that one only only i will not get a right faith ultimately i have to give up those things and go to the nirvikal dasa primary abstract comprehensive state in which i just now enjoy my experience of the inner soul and that's what the aim is so i'm coming from all the way from outside gradually come, uh, making my circle tighter and tighter and tighter <clears throat> i knock on the uh, door of the soul i and uh, soul's door enter a uh, soul's door um, and uh, opens i enter the soul and now i find out the modes made secondary impure modes made secondary pure modes made secondary divisions of the attribute made second now my my final aim is an eternal soul substance and faith has to be directed there so that's what the uh, process that one has to follow to obtain right faith interesting but not present in the inherent nature of the soul even though rag is made by me but it that drug state is only in the modal aspect and it is not present in my uh, uh, eternal uh, nature of the soul for example i am the healthy person i have a healthy body and everything now i find out that i have some infection some abscess somewhere in the body that is the impurity of my pure self pure self means pure pure nature of the body right now that abscess I need to take it out because it's not part of my health. So same way, uh, rag is occurring. If rag is occurring in the soul, but does not need to be accepted. It needs to be rejected. <clears throat> to believe I'm the doer and it's mine. I am the doer of the rag. The rag is mine that kind of a feeling that if i get it then it's a wrong feeling remember it's very easy to remove the dwesh inclination of aversion anger deceit etc state to remove it's very easy but to remove the rag i have the rag for my family i have the rag for my business i have the rag for my money it, those are the one is very difficult to get detached and so constant reminder and knowing the nature of that rag is very important what is rag where is get generated how am i responsible for that all those ideas when i understand and i start taking ownership of it that i am the reason the rag occurs within me but i'm not the doer of it i'm the knower of it if i do that then my it attachment towards the outside material object get diminished it's still there but it's very diminished remember to have facility like you know, if you're if you if you're making money your money your car your nice family you have house nice house so it's okay but now if i undo attachment to those things this is my house is based on the street and i mean nobody has ever made this kind of that kind of arrogance i don't need to have it because the 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 facility i got it from the fruition of the old karma in the past so i have to accept that and not to have arrogance towards it and so you have to be very careful where is the rag occurring within me constantly we should be aware of it and try to diminish the intensity of rag within me <coughs> so pure point of view or absolute point of view or nishchane or suddhane whatever name you want to give it or give it that occurs when one directs attention to the eternal soul substance present within one bring the faith to this immutable soul which is a true eternal entity where there are no divisions perceived where the divisions of the uh, uh, artificially created division in the uh, attributes are made secondary all the modal aspects are made secondary and i just say on the eternal soul substance that's all i give importance to the rest of the thing i give 
make them secondary. That's it. I didn't, didn't I don't deny their existence, but make them secondary. One makes conventional point of view secondary as it generates non-entity. Conventional point of view is called non-entity, means it's not existing because it is made secondary. Existence is not denied, but it's considered non-entity because it is made secondary. This non-entity is present, but simply made secondary. Non-entity generates wrong meaning. Remember, what are the wrong, wrong entity here? Model aspect is wrong entity. A, uh, artificially created division in the undivided infinite attributes. So they are called non-entity, means abutard. The word in the stanza comes abutard, means non-entity generating wrong meaning. When compared with the true meaning or true nature of the eternal soul substance. Remember, whenever we talk nay, whenever we talk partial point of view, it is always in relation to with, with something. In relationship with something. For example, for example, here absolute point of view is eternal soul substance. And at the same time, even my mode, my cable gnan mode, my omniscient mode is made secondary and thereby it's called non-entity. Oh my God, are you telling non-entity to the omniscience mode occurring within me? Are you crazy or what? Compared to what? Compared to what? It's called word sapex in relationship to what? For example, in one place, I think it's in a uh, problem in Provence and I'm, I'm not absolutely sure about it. But in one place it says, rag, rag getting generated in my mode is an absolute point of view. Are here, every sentence, every bullet you are saying, rag is a convention point of view. Rag is to be discarded, everything. And now you are telling rag is also an absolute point of view. Compared to what? There is a different aspect in that sentence at all, totally, because in the mode, in my modes, each and every mode gets generated by its own nature. One after another, after, after another, after another, this mode keeps on coming. And independently, without any dependence on anything else, my rag mode is also produced right now in this present mode right now, for example. That means it's independent, it doesn't depend on anything else, it's natural function of the mode, and that's why the rag occurred in that mode independently. That's why from that perspective, the rag is also called absolute point of view, because it's independent, non-dependent on anything else, and it comes of its own, it's nature of the uh, uh, nature of the mode, that's why it's called pure point. So, absolute point of view and conventional point of view, they are both used in relation to something. For example, if I just say, this is my car. Because it's not your, that's why it's mine. Because I'm paying the mortgage on it, I'm paying monthly, monthly payment to the bank and everything. You are not paying. That's why it's mine. So if you consider that point of view, you can say that is my quote unquote absolute point of view with compared to you not possessing that car. So we have to understand in, in scripture, lots of places, contradictory appearing statement will occur. But with my discriminative mind, my discriminative thought, I will find it out that why such thing is called certain way because in what relationship the sentences have been said. That's why there's nothing is absolute. 
the, the spoken words uses the relativity. And so we have to have that kind of understanding. So we don't have to get freaked out if somebody says rag is an absolute point of view. Then you, you on your mind right away the light should go on. Then oh yeah, because it's in the mode. Mode is independently occurring. Mode doesn't depend on anything else. And that's why that mode is called absolute point of view. So this kind of understanding we are going to develop as we progress in some SR. And these are the things, if you talk to somebody else, for example, in some SR, in one place it comes, uh, 200, the late 200s that the stanzas are there. Mokshadikar, I think Mokshadikar, yeah. That uh, it says, Pratikaman is Vishkumbha. Pratikaman is poison. Are you telling Pratikaman is poison? So what do I do? In auspicious inclination, auspicious inclination, pure inclination. Pratikaman is an auspicious inclination, but if I give undue importance to that Pratikaman alone, that means it generates inclination of attachment and as a result it generates bondage of the karma could be it could be auspicious karma but it creates bondage of the karma and as a result i'll be that much away from my eternal soul substance so <coughs> pratikaman is called vishkum means a poison and a pratikaman means no pratikaman is called Amrutkum means it is called nectar. Means here, even from this auspicious process I'm doing, I need to go here, not here. When it says this is poison, doesn't mean that you just go out and just watch TV and watch ball game and waste your time. No, you aim high. You, so how those words are used, it's very important for us to understand. Knowledge mode knows its own knowledge mode knows its own mode a two sentence. Knowledge mode, I have the knowledge mode right now. It knows my it know, knows its own knowledge mode. So that's a two sentence. Now, knowledge mode knows rag <coughs> means knowledge occurs in its own mode, thereby with literal point of view. <coughs> First bullet, knowledge mode knows the knowledge. So that's a true. Now, knowledge mode, knowledge mode here, me, myself, knowledge mode has seen a reflection of rag occurring within. So now, in my knowledge mode, I make artificially two divisions. Knowledge mode know it doing the function of knowing and knowledge mode uh, 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 seeing the presence of inclusive of attachment as a reflection within. So that becomes the subwood, little point of view. We have gone through this one in great detail. Yeah. I always have issues with the knowledge mode. So you're saying that you see reflection from within or illumination? You can say illumination or reflection, both are same meaning. But reflection means you give it back, right? So no, no. illumination. Let's put it illumination. Okay, illumination means there is a there is a mirror and there's a, there is something over here. It gets illuminated in the mirror. So same okay. way, in the rag it gets illuminated in the in the knowledge mode. Right? That's fine. Okay, thank you. <coughs> Knowing that one, now that we know what's an absolute point of view. What's a conventional point of view? So purpose for conventional point of view is for knowing point only. Conventional point of view, I have to I, I have to accept its presence, but it's for knowledge perspective. I know that it's there. I don't take ownership on that. But purpose for absolute point of view is honoring point of view. Honoring my I respect that one. I like, I would like to be in the absolute point of view all the time. 
So it's adre lo prayojan vanche. And a convention point of view is jane lo prayojan vanche. Means purpose of convention point of view is only knowing point of view. It, it's there. It's there. And having said it's there, I made them a secondary. Here, absolute point of view is I'm, I'm honoring that one. I respect that one because that's my ultimate aim. So these are the two important words will come as we progress further also. The convention point of view, janel of Prajanva. Absolute point of view, Adrelo. Adrelo means honoring point of view, respect point of view. <coughs> now, pure point of view is an eternal true nature of the self. Suddha naino vishay trikali dhru suddha atma che. Pure point of view. Now, remember, where is a pure point of view occurring? Pure point of view. Partial point of view is nai. Partial point of view is nai. This nai always occurs in sutta in a scriptural knowledge. Knowledge is divided into five parts. Perception knowledge, scriptural knowledge, clairvoyance knowledge, telepathy knowledge, and omniscience knowledge. There are five divisions of the knowledge, out of which is a human being, five sense, sentient human being. We have two knowledges with us perception knowledge and scriptural knowledge and the main action occurs in the scriptural knowledge <coughs> what <coughs> excuse me whatever i perceive now i analyze and act accordingly that's a scriptural knowledge so nai occurs in the scriptural scriptural knowledge only telepathy and uh, oh, oh, uh, and uh, uh, clairvoyance knowledge, there are no no partial point of view. In omniscience knowledge, it it has a complete composite knowledge of everything, so there are no partial point of views. So only partial point of view occurs in a sutta in a scriptural knowledge. So pure point of view means suddhanai is the eternal true nature of the self. What is my final aim? My aim is to look and bring the faith and settle down my faith on eternal true nature of the self. So, when is the, 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 the Sutagnan? Sutagnan has partial point of view. And this Sutagnan is the mode of the knowledge attribute. He is a soul substance, all know soul substance, knowledge attribute. And knowledge attribute has a mode, and in that mode, partial point of view occurs because there is a sutta there. There is a scriptural knowledge there. Because I'm the sentient human being, I have not obtained omniscience right now. <clears throat> so, so this modal aspect does the function of work. Remember, in the whole gamut of the soul, soul substance, soul substance is eternal, immutable, never changing, remains same. Attributes, eternal, immutable, never changing, they remain the same. Inert, they both are inert. Only action occurs in the mode. And this mode having action, this mode having sutta this mode having scriptural knowledge more is doing partial point of view and now it says i'm going to look at the eternal soul substance so what's the object for this mode what's the object for this sutta mode so what's the object for this scriptural knowledge more object is eternal true nature of the self so sutta naino vishay the absolute point of view is object is eternal, eternal, pure, <coughs> all over soul substance. So remember that only division, I mean, the, the, the noi will only occur in a sutta We have a sutta till we obtain keval it will remain sutta 
Audigna, that means clairvoyance knowledge and telepathy, they don't have no within them. Actually, now, so what happens here? Where is the action getting done? Action for the pure point of view is getting done in the more. But wait a second, now you are confusing us so much that before, few more, few slides before, you said we have to make the same mode secondary and everything. And now you are saying the pure point of view is occurring the more. What are all these confusing sentences coming out? <clears throat> well, remember, I'm into the uh, 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 circumference of this soul right now. I have entered the soul and I said, where are the actions occurring? Then soul substance says, I'm inert. Attribute says, I'm inert. Mode says, okay, you know what? I'm doing action. So, okay, mode, rather than looking outside, <coughs> you direct your attention to the eternal soul substance. So what is doing function of bringing faith to the eternal soul substance? Once again, mode is doing the function of bringing faith to the eternal soul substance. While this action is going on in the mode, action is occurring in the mode, but my object is eternal soul substance. My mode's job is to bring attention to the eternal soul. So eternal soul substance becomes important. And so at the time, mode, where the actual action is going on, is made secondary. So even though action is occurring in the mode, even though we acknowledge that action is occurring in the mode and everything, and it is directing attention to the eternal soul substance, but my object is eternal soul substance. And so I make that for as a primary and mode also, I still make it secondary, even though it's present. So it becomes kind of a very oxymoron that at once one sentence we are saying, yeah. yes, yeah, exactly. Because we want to make the object something that we don't even know or understand. So that's that's the ox. That's that's the weird part. Is uh, but it all happens at one when in one summit you get you get the faith and the attention. Uh, yep. What do you mean by viche in English? Viche is object. Object means I'm the subject and you are the object. I'm doing the function of seeing and you are the object that I am seeing you. So you become the object and I'm become the subject. I'm the action and you are the passive person. You are just simply present there as an object. So what did you see? All this knowledge that I'm getting it Number one, I already found it out that outside of the soul, my sphere of action is none. <clears throat> Having said that, I enter into the soul's domain. When I enter the soul's domain, then, <coughs> then I found out soul as a substance is inner, attributes are inner, and only action is occurring in the mode. So my only help is a mode through which I can do any kind of actions. Now, I understood from all these things that my real nature is eternal soul substance. So I tell my mode, look at the eternal soul substance, bring the attention to there. And so the object becomes important, not the doer, not the mode doing action. So mode is doing action, but that action is also made secondary. And my aim is an eternal soul substance. Now, it becomes very, very awkward way of presentation and everything. And it's very difficult to understand. But if we have come all the way up to this stage, now we understand action is only occurring in mode. So I have to take support of the mode. There is no doubt about it. But taking support, I don't give undue importance to that mode because important thing is my eternal soul substance, which is an inert sitting there doing nothing. So I have to just look at that one. 
I'm doing function. Uh, let's say that, uh, uh, that uh, one, one example I give, that uh, one, uh, 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 no, that, that won't be the good, uh, right example here. But for, I want to see prime minister. My eyes are doing function of looking at prime minister. My eyes are saying that, okay, you're meeting prime minister. But what is important? My looking at it, feeling of it, or it is the object which is prime minister that I'm meeting. What is more, my, my, even though action is occurring through me in my mode, but prime minister meeting is more important for me. So this is the prime minister. My eternal soul substance is the one that I'm going to meet. And that becomes important for me rather than who is doing the action of all these things. So that's what this is. That's the second point. Say, actual pure point of view is a mode of a part of scriptural knowledge, all called script, uh, uh, sacred knowledge or sutagna. <coughs> so action occurs in sutagna. <coughs> pure point of view mode illu illuminates the eternal pure true nature of the soul. Now remember, sutagna or Matignan or Audi Manapariya Kevalna. All the knowledge is they have one function and one function is to have self and alien illumination property. <clears throat> Me, this my knowledge mode has a self and alien illumination property. When I'm directing my attention to the outside world, then I'm seeing this book over here, I'm seeing this phone over here, I'm seeing quite a few things over here. But <coughs> same time, when I bring this knowledge more to myself, to eternal soul substance, which is hiding behind. So eternal soul substance, which is inert and is always present. So now I bring my attention from alien objects illumination to self object illumination. They both are present. Remember the original figure we saw it, that the peacock is present and eternal soul substance is present, but both are present. Whom do I give importance? Illumination of the peacock or illumination of the eternal soul substance? So those are the things I have to decide that give importance to one thing and then make the other thing a secondary, even though it is present. <clears throat> so one, so one, can you talk about... I yeah. I'm sorry. Uh, I'm yeah. Uh, Sri Madhuracharya says, "Jedrasta chedrastino, te chedjiv swarup." Yeah. Is that is that relevant here? So what is yeah. what is he saying? Yeah. Jedrasta chedrastino. Drasti means faith mode, modal aspect. My faith mode, which was directed to the um, um, alien object. Now, faith mode is turning around and is directing to the drasta. Drasta means all knower soul substance. <coughs> so my, my attention from the alien object is taken away and is brought to the eternal soul substance. Je drasta che drastino. Je drasta means eternal soul, eternal of our soul substance is the object of drasti means the mode, the faith mode. Je drasta che drastino, je jane che roop, abadya anubhav te rahe, te che jiswaru. Means <coughs> in my mode, now I have reflect, I have an illumination of my eternal soul substance that is occurring in the mode. And now when I'm doing that, the bliss comes out, peace comes out, happiness comes out and knowledge becomes purer and that's called self-experiencing phase. So pure point of view, more, 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 illuminates eternal pure nature of the soul within. So this mode, this pure mode over here has illuminated eternal soul substance in the mode because actions are always occurring in the mode. So action is occurring in the mode and I still make that mode secondary and I said, hey, what did you illuminate? Well, I illuminated eternal souls. Oh, that's what I wanted. So even the working capacity of the mode 
I made it secondary and I said, hey, the object is illuminated. So object is giving the happiness, joy, bliss, peace. And so that's why the action occurs in the mode, but still it is made secondary. <clears throat> Even though it is mode, remember the action occurred in the mode, but one takes the attention away from this mode and concentrates on eternal true nature of the self. So uh, uh, Gurudev tried to explain to us, remember, he has an experience. He's talking from his experience. He's trying to explain to us from his experience, but words have limitation. And so whatever we understand from him, whatever we understand from the discourses given, then it is our duty to reconstruct the picture in our own, uh, own psyche and then go towards that. So mode is doing action, but I have to make the mode secondary. How does it, uh, what does it mean? Because mode has illuminated eternal soul substance and there, when I'm looking at the eternal soul substance only, then there is a presence of happiness, bliss, joy, peace, etc. occurring there. And that is the, that's what I would like to, I would, I would like to achieve. I have to take the support of more and then make it secondary. As action occurs in the mode, there is acceptance in the mode about the purity of the eternal truth of the self. That I accepted the purity in the mode, but again, I'm making the mode, modal aspect secondary. My purity is more important. Eternal true nature of the self is known as Karan Paramatma, as this eternal conscious element is present in all living beings. Suddenly, Gurudev Sri over changes the tune and he throws little bit more complex situation here and we say don't worry Gurudev we are ready we have we have come up to this point and now we are ready to understand what you are going to talk to us what you are going to give a my, my, microscopic point to us so what he says <clears throat> remember this eternal soul substance is inert and doesn't do anything its presence is there <clears throat> So that eternal true nature of the self is called Karan Paramatma. <coughs> and we'll go to the definition of Karan Paramatma. <coughs> Gurudev is trying to take us to the Niyamsa stanza, up to uh, uh, 15 stanza, in which this Karan Paramatma and Karya Paramatma are explained. So what are those things? Eternal true nature of the self. This eternal two nature of the self sitting over here, eternally, immutable, just, just, just permanent, not doing anything, inert, sitting there. That is called karam. Karam means cause. Cause. Cause and paramatma means the, the, the pure soul. Pure soul as a cause. And again, don't get confused, we are coming to the next point. So it's an eternal conscious element present in all living being is called Karan Paramatma. Let's hang on to that name right now. Now, remember, what did we say here? This is my mode, these are my attributes, and this is my eternal soul substance. So we are talking about eternal soul substance here, eternal soul substance here, and that is called Karan Paramatma eternal soul substance substance the eternal pure immutable <clears throat> and uh, all knower soul substance which is there all the time it is there in nigod it's there in siddha bhagwan it's there in all the rest of the living beings in between so that is the karan paramatma now omniscience knowledge <clears throat> I have the omniscience right now. My knowledge is pure right now. Remember, eternal soul substance in my knowledge mode. My knowledge mode is a pure right now. In the right knowledge mode, they are called Karya Paramatma because Karya means action. Action and Paramatma means the all-knower all entity. So Karya is a mode and Karan is the eternal soul substance. Let's go through that and then we'll discuss more. 
कारण मीन्स कॉज एंड कार्य मीन्स इफेक्ट सो कॉज एंड इफेक्ट रिलेशनशिप ऑफकोर्स इन द सेम सब्सटेंस this is the extremely microscopic point and when gurudev spoke for the first time even some of the learned pundits they were not able to understand what gurudev wanted to talk about so for a long time he just did this close this subject and did not touch it and in later years of his life again he started talking about it because there was maturity amongst the listener so <clears throat> cause and effect always occurs in a given substance only so if i have the omniscience knowledge occurring within me or i have the right faith knowledge occurring within me then then that is a effect then cause has to be within <clears throat> cause cannot be in this outside book or outside material thing like phone or anything <clears throat> cause and effect have to be present in the same substance at a given time so when there is effect <coughs> <coughs> when there is effect cause has to be present when there is effect cause has to be present and effect is present in the soul then cause has to be present in the soul also what's the effect here omniscience knowledge or enlightenment knowledge or right faith knowledge that's my effect occurring in the mold so if that effect of where is the cause cause is a eternal soul substance eternal soul substance is a cause so ultimately when i with my own personal effort direct attention to the eternal soul substance then in the more the effect is seen in the form of omniscience or the right faith or enlightenment whatever you want to say those words so purity is generated in the more when i bring attention to the eternal soul substance so eternal soul substance becomes karan parmatma it becomes the cause for this action and uh, <coughs> pure mode occurring within me is become karya parmatma means the effect of the uh, reaction kiritanka yeah i didn't get everything on this slide it's, 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 so i was maybe i'm tired but if it's possible <coughs> for the next week to start with this one yeah we'll be doing that we'll be doing that so i will okay. we'll wrap it up and then uh, <clears throat> so this cause effect relationship is perceived in a given substance only as they have inherent relationship cause and effect they have inherent relationship wherever there is cause effect has to be present and effect is there cause has to be present <clears throat> and cause effect remains in one substance only so if we say effect is in the form of a mold then cause has to be present in the soul substance and it will be eternal soul substance becomes a cause for that eternal two nature of the soul is known as karan parmatma only 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 when the effect in the form of pure knowledge mode is perceived means karya parmatma uh, this is a little, little difficult subject and uh, we, it will need a, a, a slightly more time and we will just do that one because we don't we are just almost running out of time right now but this is a kind, kind of a thought for the week that you can just think about you know, what it means and everything and we'll be talking more about it next week any question yes yes um this is really interesting અહિયાંથી that's why guru barabar guru they said that tu parmatma che em nakki ka first the 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 the, 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 the uh, listener say gurudev aap parmatma che e tumne nakki ka ke nahi tu parmatma che e pehla nakki ka means ke you are the supreme soul accept that fact and so that the the the, the uh, if the words have limitations so other philosophies may use as a 
uh, 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 <coughs> all encompassing uh, um, the eternal soul substance present in the universe and those are not the one that we are using over here paramatma means supreme soul that is me i am the one i'm the god i'm the bhagwan i'm the atma <coughs> i'm i'm paramatma <coughs> but, but i i <laughs> i don't know how to describe this i'm going to try uh akarya paramatma che e mode e mode apne paryay right ave aa paryay swatantra che ave uh everything that i experience in my life is is not because of the thing that i'm experiencing is because i'm experiencing the 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 paryay Yes. Right. Like a laugh of my own, and I'm not experiencing any laugh of my own. I'm experiencing Bariyai Ivy. So that way, everything that's going on in the whole universe is only happening because it's happening in my Bariyai. In my Bariyai. Yes. Yes. So now my. Own... So in some sense, a, a Paramatma, E Paramatma, Barabar says Supreme Soul ni jvache, but it's related directly to the entire universe in some mm-hmm. way because. No, 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 but again, when, when, when you see, remember, when we said uh, a soul has a capacity of knowing self and alien object. Alien, what is alien object? Anything beyond me is an alien object. For me, you are the alien object. For me, the Mahavi Swami Bhagavan becomes alien object. So they are not me. They are away from me. Yeah, so they are away from me. alien about me what is within my circumference that is me only and so parmatma eternal soul substance is me i am the parmatma i am the supreme soul i am the pure soul i am the one not anybody else they all become alien objects for me <clears throat> it will need more thoughts keep thinking and we'll have a lively discussion next week don't worry about it okay all right Okay, I think you know I have uh, that Heman by Gandhi. He is here with me, and he is supposed to leave right now. So uh, uh, you know uh, we may not have much more time to discuss right now, but uh, we'll continue next week. Okay, Jai Jnan Jai. Javani ke gyan se suje lok alok sovani mastak namo sada det ho do nine times from Mukha. जय जिनेन्द्र मिच्छाय दुकराम जय जिनेन्द्र जय जिनेन्द्र मिच्छाय दुकराम मिच्छाय दुकराम यू नो नेक्स्ट वीक आई मे बी ट्रैवलिंग टू कम बैक होम सो आई विल सी हाउ इट वर्क्स आउट मे बी वी मे हैव टू पोस्टपोन फॉर अ बिकॉज़ आई विल बी ट्रैवलिंग ट्यूसडे नाइट इन अराइविंग फिनिक्स ट्यूसडे आफ्टरनून सो वी विल सी हाउ इट वर्क्स आउट ओके आई विल सेंड द ईमेल सो कैरी टर्न का